Hey Zane, uh, Leanne, um, thank you for this opportunity to, to meet with you. Um, I, I talked to you a little bit on the phone, Zane, about setting this meeting up. I hope it was in an okay time for, for, for you, Leanne. Have you had to take time off to? Yeah. Yeah. And that's okay? Yeah, okay. just another one of the things. Mm, all right. Hey, we need to explain why we're here. Um, Zane, you got charged with um, burglary, is that right? Yes. Okay. You um, uh, went to court last week and pleaded guilty? Yes, he did. Okay. Did anybody talk to you about restorative justice when you appeared last week? Yeah, there was somebody at the court there that came and talked it through, through okay. with us. All right. Okay. Maxine and I are from Restorative Justice Services. Um, we're facilitators of restorative justice conferences. And we've come to talk to you to see whether a restorative justice meeting is a good idea. So that meeting is the idea of you meeting up with the people whose house you burgled and see if there's anything that you'd like to say about that. And they might have some questions and things they'd like to say. Uh, there might be some things that you could do to help make amends, to help put right for what it is that you did. And in all of that, um, Maxine and I would ask some questions, give everybody a chance to speak, and at the end of that, prepare a report that would go to the court so that the judge has an understanding about what you said and what you did, okay? Does that all make sense? So why we're meeting today is just really to get a bit of an understanding about what happened from your end and, um, and to decide together whether this restorative justice thing is a good idea or not. Maxine's going to be taking a few notes. It's just because if we do end up writing a report, then some of the stuff that you say um, in our meeting this morning will go into that report. Um, is that okay if she takes notes? Uh, yes, it's fine. Yep, okay, cool. So, Zane, tell us what happened. This is about six weeks ago this burglary happened? Yeah, roughly. Yep. Six months ago. Okay. We wouldn't really call it a burglary in a way. Nothing really. Major happened is walking down the street, just went in somebody's house and had a look around, and that was it. Yeah. What did you go into the house for in the first place? I was just checking it out, and just maybe, if, you know, like a couple of DVDs, CDs that I liked were lying around. I could take them to real groovy or something, and yeah. get rid of them. How straight were you when you went into this house? You'd been drinking or drugging or? I've been out the night before. That was nothing hardcore. Just okay. with friends that I, I've met a couple recently. Yeah. It's just bored all day. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So Zane, a party the night before. Okay. Feeling a bit seedy that day. The other bit that I'm not clear on in, in what you said was about <clears throat> you were inside the house. What happened then? Just, just looking at things and things. Just went. Don't know where I was. Maybe the kitchen. Maybe the living room. Maybe the, probably stepped into a bedroom. Mm -hmm. Heard a noise and I ran. And did you see anybody? Yeah. Who did you see? The police summary says that the owner of the house came in while you were still there. Is that what happened? Probably. I think. Yep. And what happened when she came in? Just bolted. You bolted? Just kind of like saw her and just ran past and pushed her. Yep. Yeah, nothing hard. Does the police and their explanation about what happened say that you that you shoved her out of the way? You know, I really don't think that he was doing it intentionally. He's been struggling with a heck of a lot, and a lot of this came up when we were having the drug counselling, didn't it, Zane? His father died in a car accident five years ago, and his, he, um, he really wasn't coping with that very well at all, and I think this is just symptomatic of it. Mm. You know, I was dealing with my own... Um, you know, just keeping the family together through that, and I, I just think that he he hasn't um, just been coping with it very well. Sure. I actually don't. I don't think he was there. I, 
I don't think he was there trying to do harm. Leanne, I understand this is a really upsetting situation for you and this is not about being a good parent or a bad parent. You know, it's about the decisions that Zane made. And um, how old are you now, Zane? She's 20. Yeah, yeah. So it's about us talking about the decisions that you made at that time and what it is that you want to do to be able to make good for that, really. Sort it out. So, Zane... In terms of you rushing out the door, you agree that you rushed out the door, you agree that you banged into the woman who came home, but you're saying to me that that happened because you were flying out the door to try and escape from the situation, is that right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, you were saying then that um, it was just kind of a spur of the moment thing and nobody got hurt. Have you thought about what it might be like for somebody to come home and find somebody in their house like that? Kind of scary. Yeah. What you think about now, when you remember what you did? I guess it was kind of dumb, I guess. Mm -hmm. So since your lawyer mentioned it to you, have you thought about the possibility of meeting with the people whose house it was? It's the, I'm probably won't work, in a way. They'd just be too angry, you know, just say sorry. I mean, I didn't really mean to any of that to happen. And probably help them. Mm -hmm. So Leanne, you've, um, you've heard Zane um, talk about some thoughts he's had about what he did and the idea of him maybe wanting to apologise yeah. to these people. What do you think? I think that's good. Yeah. I think that's really good. It's been able to do that. Mm -hmm. And, um... I'll learn. Did you say you'll, I'll learn? Yeah? Probably just see some more things clearly, I guess. Mm-hmm. I'd probably treat people. Why you treat people? Leanne, what do you think needs to change for Zane? He's got to wake up to himself and see what he's doing with his life. See how much he's affecting the people around him. So Zane, it might be helpful for you if we explain how this meeting works and it gives you know you both the chance to get a picture in your head about what it would be like before you make a decision about whether to go ahead. And then the process starts with us asking you to talk about what you did and why that's important is that it gives you a chance to say sorry if that's what you want to do or to say whatever else you want to say for them they'll be watching and listening to what you say and seeing what their thoughts are about whether you really do understand the effects on them okay and then after that they'll probably have some questions for you and some things that they'd like to say to you know what and well you said before that you were um, worried that they might be um, angry with you and I think you know that's a strong possibility that they would so that there might be some fairly blunt things that they like to say but it's Maxine's job and my job to make sure that um, it stays safe so that while there might be some hard things said it won't get to the point of anybody making threats or um, or it becoming violent in any way okay so in that meeting situation Zane do you think you could listen as they explain to you how hard it's been for them because you went into their house yeah, I guess we could. Yeah. Okay. Once we've talked about that stage and things, then there's a next stage where we talk about the possible outcomes. And this is a chance for you to think about what it is you might be able to do for them to try and make up for burgling the house. I don't know whether you've given any thought to things that you might be able to, um, to give them or contribute or sort out. I mean, I could probably build something or repair chair. You could build or repair? Could. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things you might be able to do? Maybe. Some gardening? Mm hmm Okay. I was thinking about selling my iPod, but I don't want to. It's my iPod. Sell your iPod, but you don't want to? <laughs> okay. All right. So anyway, as far as the conference is concerned, a chance for you to think about some things that you might be able to do to make up for what you did, okay? This is a chance for you. I'll just have a think. Yeah.
Maxine and I are from Restorative Justice Services and when I rang I explained that we're just going to like to talk to you about the burglary that happened about six weeks ago. And I don't know whether you know, but the, um, the young man who burgled your property um, went to court uh, about two weeks ago and he's pleaded guilty to the burglary and the judge has uh, remanded it off for about six weeks for us to talk to you and talk to him about whether this restorative justice conference is a good idea or not. Conference is the possibility of you guys meeting with him, uh, talking to him. Um, we met with him this morning and we know that he'd like to be able to meet with you and apologise for what he's done. Um, but um, yeah, just this is a chance for you and us to talk about what's possible and to see if it's something that would help you in some way. Just need to stress that it's a voluntary process too. It's not something that you have to do. Um, and if at the end of us talking, then you decide that it's not something you want to do, then that's absolutely fine. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So Petra, are you okay um, to talk about what happened uh, on the night of the burglary? I came home about um, 7.30 or quarter to eight and the light was on, so I thought Sandy was home. Um, she usually is home. And the uh, door was locked, so I unlocked the door. And when I came in, noticed that things were had been pushed over and um, chair and stuff, and then suddenly this guy just came and just sort of pu pushed me aside, pushed me against the wall. Out. Threw you against the wall, love. Don't forget that he salted you. Yeah, he threw I, you against the wall. I did see him. Bruises all over your arms. Tom, Tom, Tom just hold, hold that thought for a moment. I do want to hear from you about what happened too, but I just need to hear from um, yeah, okay. Petra at this stage. I think the main thing for me was that I had no idea if Sandy was home or not, and if she had, um, if she was at home, what might have happened to her. Uh, yeah. So I um, just started screaming out for her and running through the house trying to, to find her, and um, that uh, um, just that I had no idea why all the drawers and why everything had been pulled out. I didn't understand. Um, what he was looking for. He's some kind of drug freak, that's why. He's looking for money to support his pain. I know you're angry. I yeah, know, I yeah, know you're I'm angry. bloody angry, mate. And I know that you saw that Petra and Sandy were put at risk by what Zane did, and I do want to hear about that. I do want to hear you explain that. I just need to make sure that I hear from Petra and Sandy, and then I'll get to you, OK? Trust that, I'll get to you. All right, all right. All right. Sorry, thank you. You're all? So Petra, was there anything else that you wanted to say about the sequence of events? I just um, immediately phoned Tom and, um, and then I sort of thought through yep. a place where Sandy could be. And, um, it turns out that Sandy had gone to a friend's place. Okay. So luckily she wasn't here. Yeah. Um, when uh, Zane, the young man, um, came crashing out, were you hurt? Um, well, you're bruised and stuff. and. Yeah. Um, I banged my head on the, the door frame, okay. but you know, I didn't need any hospital care or that. It was just yeah. it was just the way that he, the way he sort of he just you know it was the look on his face um, and his sort of violence and um, it was really really terrifying. Yeah. Sandy, how did you um, first hear about what happened? You weren't home. Mum was really relieved about that. What, um, how did you first hear about what happened? Um, well, I was just at Sally's and then I got a phone call. Mum called Sally's and she just said I should come home now and that something had happened and that she'd come pick me up. How was she? She was real shaken up. Mm. I don't know. She was just happy to see me. Yeah. Yeah. So you didn't know uh, Petra until um, you rang Sandy that um, that she was okay. No, first thing I had to like check the house, yeah. and um, and then uh, oh, I think I yeah, you rang, called me. I rang you, and then yep. I just started going with well, the obvious. Um, her closest friend Sally yep. is often where she is in the afternoon, so right. I tried there, and it was just really good that she was <laughs> that she was here. Yeah, big relief. Oh, huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And how are you now? Well, um, I don't, I don't know how other people sort of uh, deal with this sort of thing, but 
it's really hard for us to live the way we used to live. Um, I find that I don't, I, I need to know where Sandy is all the time, um, and that's a real pain for her, I, I suspect. Um, I need to know that someone's going to be home if she's coming home. I also have the feeling that I'd rather have um, someone at home when I was coming home. Yeah. So we've had to do oh, major thing, you know, locks, get locks changed and get things done on the windows and um, apart from the stuff that was broken, there's been a lot of expense just um, dealing with getting the place more secure, security lights outside. Yeah. So it's been a pretty difficult month or so. Oh yeah, it has. Yeah. Joanne, how did you get contacted or...? Um, I was contacted by police yep. um, soon after the incident happened and um, I came round to talk to Petra and Sandy. So what other differences has it made for your life? Oh no, it's just I notice yeah. a lot of... I don't know, I'm just a lot more paranoid about little noises or little things just when I'm in bed or just... I don't know, now that it's actually happened, it's actually a reality. Mm. Just never thought it would really happen. Yeah. Tom, how did you first um, get to hear about what happened? Well, she gave me a call and the night it happened. Yeah. I was around here like a shot. Mm. You know, she was pretty shaken up. Might be helpful for us to talk a little bit about how these meetings work so that you get a bit of an understanding of, you know, what you might be um, going into. As I said, we've talked to Zane this morning because we need to check out really carefully that he wants to be involved in the conference for the right reasons, not just to kind of make it better for himself, but because he's got some genuine concerns. So for him, is this the easy way out? Is this not going to court? Is this us just seeing him and then him just being like, yeah, so, and then we're like, okay. He has to go back to court at the end and be sentenced, so that happens anyway. But this is a, a situation where they have to sit and face up to the people that they've hurt and understand that there's real people behind the situation, not just somebody with a house who maybe had some money. So it's not easy for, for him. Oh, it's not easy to sort of facing him. No, no. I mean, it's bad enough with the memories of kind of what he's done in the house, but like to have him then in our kind of conscious... Sometimes people say it can help to, you know, you've got that fleeting picture of him crashing past you on his way out the door, and sometimes people say it can help to put that picture to rest, to have a chance to meet and talk to the person in, in a way that's much more in control for you and you can say what you need to say and express your thoughts and feelings and I said before that you know we need to be careful about it not being a violent situation but we encourage people to let rip and say what you really think about what happened and to let them know how bad it's been as a result of his right. invasion of your home. There's also the point that uh, he's never met he's never met these guys he hasn't right. seen them in terms of if Sandy's in town at night, or if she's going to bump into him, mm. what's he going to be like? Is there going to be um, fear about kind of retaliation from him for things that we might yeah. say in the conference? Yeah. Yeah. What if we say the wrong thing and, the, oh. and that? And so he just builds up this big grudge, and then you know. So some concerns about, in fact, meeting might make it worse for for, for you guys rather than yeah. ma making. It I mean, he's not going to want to hear what we're going to say. I don't think. He's prepared to hear what you're going to say. We've asked him that question, you know, and he knows that you're likely to be extremely upset. Part of what Maxine and I have done in talking to Zane is to check him out to make sure that it's it's going to be a positive thing. Now, there's no 100% guarantees that that's the case, but Maxine, any qualms about having met Zane and thinking that this is not going to be? No, I think I think he'd be okay at, at a meeting. I think it'll be really helpful for you to see him. Mm -hmm. And his mum will be here too. I've just got this huge image of this really, I don't know, I don't, just like this black image of this person that's just out to get us, I don't know. Yeah. And maybe if I actually saw him then I could actually put a picture mm. to my mind. Okay. Cool. Maybe it would help. Yep. Do you think it would help? Oh, we can think about it. 
So you guys are going to think about whether the conference proceeds. I don't know whether I finished explaining um, like the stages, and I just wanted to kind of just do that again in case I haven't made that clear. So we get Zane to speak. In, in every conference we offer people the opportunity to start with um, you know, some sort of statement of significance or a prayer or a karakia or something like that. Is that something that would be important for you guys to do? Is that, uh, no? no, it's not really. No? Not really not really. Okay. And I'm going to phone you at six, is that right? Tomorrow yeah. night? Yeah. Awesome. And look, um, I've got a, um, a card here somewhere. That, um, that's got our contact details on it too, so that if you um, if you need to contact us in the meantime, then um, that would be great. Okay. okay. And if there's any questions in the mean, meantime, or all, all right, cool. Thank you for your time. Thanks. Okay. We know that it's not an easy thing to roll into, and that it takes courage from everybody to to even think about an idea of a meeting like this. But we know from having been involved in a number of these sorts of meetings that it can be helpful and we hope that it is for you today. Okay, so Zane, you've had a chance to think about what it is that you need to say. What would you like to say to Petra and Sandy and Tom? <clears throat> I wanna say uh you know, thanks for giving me the opportunity to say I'm sorry, and I want to let you know that uh, that I didn't mean to do any things I did today. Okay. Didn't mean it. Thanks, Zane. Do you want to just talk about what happened? Well, I was just walking down the street and was counting and looking and just looking at people's houses, and I don't know. I didn't really think what I was doing, and when I came across the house, it was probably the first one I saw. I saw a window. It was open. Um, slightly ajar. And I couldn't see anybody home. So I kind of just didn't even think. I just went through the window, and climbed in. And just sneaking around, just having a look and... What was the reason why you decided to go into the house in the first place? I was just... looking for something to take. Okay. What happened then? I just started on getting a bit frantic and... just pulling things apart, just looking at the things, pushing things around. It's a bit, made a bit of a mess. Yeah. And um, I heard a... I heard a noise. So what was the noise? What was the noise that you heard? What did it end up being? A person coming through the through the door, but I didn't didn't know where exactly where it was coming from. I didn't I didn't know the house very well. Hmm. I kind of just ran ran out the door and I kind of like went past mum and kind of knocked her a little bit. Mhm. Mm okay. So that was um Petra, that, that you went past? Okay. You've been to court since and pleaded guilty? Pleaded guilty. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. So, Petra and Sandy and Tom, are there firstly any questions that you would like to ask Zane about what he did? <coughs> you seen us before? No. No. You haven't looked at our house? And been keeping watch on our house or anything? No. No. And you've never seen Sandy anywhere? No, not that I know of, no. Because I don't quite understand why we were... why it's happened to us. Well, it's just looked like every other house. I didn't really... you know think about who was there and you know whose house it was. I was just thinking about some of the things that you had hoping to find. You on drugs, bro? Can I, can, I, can I not say that? You can choose to not answer that if you want to. Um, we can come back to that too if you'd like to. I just... Um, I, don't, yeah. I don't know. I don't want to talk about it. Okay. All right. 
So maybe starting with you, Petra, if, if there's stuff that you'd like to say about what it was like coming home and, um, and what your experience has been like that night and since then. I will never be able to enter the house again uh, in the same way after what happened. I will never be able to be at home by myself or have Sandy at home by herself ever again without fear. Um, everything that we took for granted about where we live is now kind of... I'm worried that people are watching the house. I'm worried that um, if someone knocks on the door, it's just going to be part of something bigger. Yeah. Um, I think the hardest thing, and I don't think um, nothing can take this away, is once I assume Sandy was home because the light was on, um, so I get inside and you come running out and knock me over, and I screamed for Sandy and there was no answer. So. The only thing that was going through my head was that um, she must be unable to speak. And I can still imagine, like, taking everything I had to go into each room looking for her, um, not knowing what I was going to find. You know, the thought that uh, that she was hurt was the, was the worst thing, I think. That doesn't... The broken window, the chairs, nothing matters. It was that, that fear. <sighs> I am really, I mean, what goes over in my head over and over is if Sandy had been home, I mean, I'm just really pleased that she wasn't home. You know, if she had been home, this outcome, could have, you know, we have no idea of telling him what sort of impulse or lack of impulse control you would have had in that situation. Do you want to ask Zane that question about um, what would have happened if um, Sandy had been home? Sandy's normally home before I get in from work and um, she would have been there that day, but it's just chance that she wasn't. I want to know what happened, what would have happened if you'd broken in and found her there. I know what you think I am and who I am. I'm not a monster. I've just left a one of even, you know. If she was there, I wouldn't have gone in. I mean, done what I did, or, or didn't do anything to upset her. Yeah. So Petra, um, what happened then? When did you find out that Sandy was okay? Couldn't find her in the house. I rang Tom um, to get on to the police and uh, then my, I just thought, right, first person Sally, ring Sally and see if she'd gone there after school, and she had. So, um, really, really relieved. So, Sandy, you were the next to hear about it. Is there anything that you'd like to say about that at this stage? I don't want to put any pressure on you at all because it's kind of your say about what you say, but I just want to make sure that you know that if you want to, you can say how it's been. Yeah? I just don't know why you went through my drawers. Why'd you have to go through my drawers? So, Sandy, why was that so upsetting for you? I don't even like my room anymore. Mm -hmm. Zane, is it the case that you went through Sandy's drawers? I want to let everyone know that I'm... All I was 
in the house for was money. I sincerely mean that I was just looking for money. I wasn't wanting to go or look or touch any of your personal items. You know what you did? You see, mate? Now this is what I'm talking about, you little shit. Do you understand that? Tom. Yeah, this is a 16-year-old girl, all right? Tom. Now just, uh, just let me have my say. say you said it. I could have my say. Say it, but say it calmly, Tom, okay? Stay calm, okay? These two women here are... They're, they're changed, man. They're changed now. And because they're changed and they're hurting and they're fretting, that makes me hurt and fret. So... It's the senselessness, bro. I just don't understand that. You don't seem like a monster, like you say. You're not a monster. But you're trying to make sense of it in light of the seriousness of the effect. Absolutely. You, and, yeah. you know, things can be fixed. I can fix the window, I can fix the chair. We can put the things back in the drawers. But what Petra's talking about is something that's deeply emotional. It's fear, and fear is a really hard thing to get rid of. I'm really sorry. I want to help. I want to. I want to help. I want to make things right in some way. I don't. I, I don't really. I wasn't even thinking about it. I don't, I don't even thought about it like that in, in a way. That you could possibly you put 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 in those words. I don't. I didn't even think of consequences. Of what I was doing. And I realise now what the pain I've caused. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I'm sorry, Mum. What do you think about what he said? Is he to be believed? He's been mugging around a bit with some people, with some bad people, but I think that if he... Like, he did some drug counselling and that was quite good. Mm -hmm. I think he really is genuinely sorry. So, um, Zane, earlier on, uh, Tom asked you about whether drugs was an issue for you and, and you said that you didn't want to answer that. You had a chance to think about that now. Um, what's, what's your answer to Tom's question? I have a drug problem. Yes. I have a drug problem. Is there more that you need to hear about that? No, oh, it's good to hear that someone is, you know, that's the truth of it, it seems to me. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Petra. And, and for you, Tom, anything you'd like to say? before we move on to talking about what's possible? I've got to agree with Petra. I'm, I'm glad to hear somebody's fronting up at last. I feel, I feel like there's finally some truth and some acknowledgement, you know, that you, that you have a drug problem and that's probably a big contribution as to why you did this senseless act that's hurt people really deeply. Thanks, Tom. And Zane, anything else before we move on? Because you did have some suggestions before about some things that you could do, but is there anything else before we cover that? You can see that I have a drug... I have a drug problem. You can see the consequences of what I've done. I can see how much pain everybody's in. I, I just want to make it right. I just want to do something to make it all better. So what have you thought of, Zane, that might be able to assist Petra and Sandy? I'll sell my car. Oh, um, I'll get, get a, a job. Get a job. That'll help. I'll, I'll get a job. I'll you know, this position going to the grocery store. I'll get a job there. And I'll pay money back. I just want to play something that I've taken away either. Okay, so Zane, what I hear you saying is that you'll you'll pay 
for whatever it is that you've damaged. Is that right? You're saying you, earlier in the conference you said you didn't take anything. Is, is that right, Petra? There's, there's nothing missing? Sandy, there's nothing actually missing? Mm -hmm. But that there was stuff damaged and things oh, yeah. that doesn't feel okay to be yours anymore? So nothing was um, taken, but there's the broken window and the fitting of security locks on yep. the doors and windows, and yep. I've got security lights put up outside. Okay. Do you know how much it's cost you to um, to do the, the window and the, and the security and the lighting? It's cost nearly $500. Okay. And then, I don't know whether it's the same for you, Petra, but Sandy, you said that there was some stuff that you owned that doesn't feel okay anymore and that you threw out. Um, is, is that something that can, can Zane help you guys to replace that by, by giving some finances towards that, or...? Yeah, he could give some money towards it. Yep, okay. So, Zane, at the moment, that's, that's $700. Is that manageable for you? You talked about selling your car and your iPod. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do what I can. I'll, I'll find, I'll, I'll work, and I'll, um, if I have to, I'll, I'll take my car and I'll put, sell it. Anything else that would um, be of assistance to you guys for Zane to do, or is there anything else that would make a difference? He needs to get some help. Yeah. You can't keep on living like this. You've got to get some help. If you've got a problem with drugs, then it's never going to go away unless you deal with it. So, Zane, what's the plan? What's your thinking around the, the drug and alcohol? I'm going to quit. Yep. And, and that's a, you'll go even if that means going to a, a long-term programme? Yes. OK. All right. Good on you, mate. OK. You tell Tim about that, and he'll tell me about that. So you'd like for um, us to get a report back on, on Zane successfully completing that, and we can pass that on to, to you guys? Yeah, okay. Pass that on to me. Cool. Leanne, from your perspective, are there other things that you think might um, help in this situation? Yeah, I think he still needs to deal with, um, with the family stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what do you think about that, Zane? Is that something else that you need to deal with so that it's not getting you into trouble? Yeah, it does. It does? OK. So, Maxine, what have we got in terms of the, uh, the agreed outcomes? The agreements made were that Zane apologised during the meeting to Petra, Tom and Sandra. Zane is to arrange to complete a drug and alcohol rehabilitation program. Yep. And Leanne and Zane will advise you so that you can advise Tom it's been completed. Yep. And Zane is to pay $700 to our office, and that is for reparation for damages and replacement articles. Right, so yep. Leanne is to arrange grief counselling for Zane. So, Zane, you're going to um, get in touch with us uh, before you go back to court and let us know that you've got that drug and alcohol counselling organised and the grief counselling organised. And, Maxine, um, what else was there that's been agreed to? Zane has agreed to stay away from Petra's home. I'm not sure that that really needs to go on the list um, for recommendations to the judge because I, mean, I can see that I don't believe you've been a stalker or that... Uh, You've targeted our house, especially. Um, so I think we can just let that one go. Thanks, Petra. So we've heard about how difficult it's been. We've reached some agreements about what can happen. And this is a chance to kind of, for a last word, either to say to each other or for the report. Um, I just want to say thank you very, very much for um, having the guts to show up here and give Zane a chance to... Um, come to terms with what's, what he's done. It's been very, very important um, for me too because I've been struggling along for a long time with this and so this is the first time that I feel that we've really been... Um, I've been... Um, you know, that there's been some progress going on. I really want to thank you all very much for that and thank you too, Tom. Cool. OK. Thanks, Liam. And Zane, for you? 
I just want to say I'm sorry. And I want to thank you guys. And then I've learned a lot. Cool. Thanks, Zane. And Sandy, is there anything that you'd like to say in conclusion? Um... It's good to see you're not as tall or as muscular as I imagined. Yeah. Not so scary. Cool. Thanks, Sandy. And Tom? I'm glad to feel, I feel like we've come forward and um, there's been some positive steps, mate. And good on you for fronting up, boy. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, man. Thanks. And Petra, what would you like to say? Um, just, you know, thank you too um, for your honesty and, um, and I really, you know, really hope you get the help that you need and I'm sure you can turn everything around uh, for the better. Cool. Thanks, Petra. The one other thing that we need to talk about is the report that comes from the conference and um, that will be typed up and um, a copy will be um, delivered to you guys and a copy goes to you and your lawyer Zane and the judge obviously gets a copy. So um, that will come in time. Now you're for sentence in four weeks time so that report will be available a, a week before you go back to court. So it will be great for us to have that information about the counselling and the money and stuff before then so that it can go into the report. Is that OK? Uh, Maxine, is there anything that you'd like to say in conclusion? Thank you, Tim. Yes, I would. I'd just like to thank each of you, really, for all that you've shared today. I know it's been really painful for some of you, and I just wish you well, and I hope you've found this a really good process for you to, to be able to work through all that you've been through, really, and to move on. So good luck with your lives and hope things go well. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks. Okay. All right, thank you all. Thanks very much, Tim. Cool. Nice week. Cheers. Thank you. Good luck, guys. All the best. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Really oh, yeah. Yeah. it's great that you're here tonight. Thanks very much. Oh, you're awesome. Well done. Yeah. I know. Thank you. Thank you. All the best, Sam. Uh, yeah, let us know how you get on. Thank you. Yeah, we won't. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Petra. That You're awesome. Great. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. Thank you, Tom. Great. I really appreciate yep. everything you've done. It's awesome. been an extraordinary experience. Thank you. Cool. Great. Right. Appreciate all the help. Cheers, Zane. Cool. Cool. Okay. Good luck. Yeah. Thanks. Come on. Part of what I could see was that um, Tom seemed to be more grieved than Petra and Sandy, but he made that really verbal. He was pretty loud about it, eh? Yeah. Mm. yeah. And consistent all the way through. Yeah, yeah. So I think you had to work extra hard, really, to close him down. Yeah. I was a bit concerned that he kind of dominated over the top of Petra mm. and Sandy. Do you think it was a bit like that? It seemed like that. Yeah. But in the end it turned and, and it came yeah. out quite positive. That yeah. they could all agree, really. Yeah. Um, and you know, our decision to um, to to seat him um, next to me, I think, well, it was plus and a minus, really. It was it was good in that it meant that he was really close when he blew up, so that I could kind of speak directly to him. But it also meant that it kind of pushed Petra and Sandra out. Yeah, I guess that's the best way you could have handled that, really, was mm. to close it down tightly. You know, when he was sort of getting very strong, and then just carry on. Really? Yeah. yeah.